It's happening. The signs of the last day's prophecies are literally happening just as we speak. And it's happening just as Bible prophecy foretold. And it's revealing that we are nearing the end of this age of grace and the appearance of Jesus Christ for his church. Thank you for being a part of this last day's church community here on this ministry channel of Signs of the Last Days. Thank you to everyone who is supporting this Signs of the Last Days ministry with your prayers and with your offerings. It is truly you praying and you giving that supports this ministry to be here and to continue. As we are here watching with you and praying with you, as the signs of the last day's prophecies are happening, revealing we're nearing the appearance of Lord Jesus Christ for his church. There's breaking news where there are reports all across media saying that Israel has now made an unprecedented direct attack into Iran as a counterstrike on Iran for them having launched over 300 missiles and drones at Israel this last weekend, which that was also an unprecedented attack by Iran from Iran's own soil, firing missiles and drones from Iran's soil into Israel. And now, according to the reports, reports in Israeli media, and we're also watching a live stream of uh, reports here uh, from live U.S. media live stream confirming it now that just as Israeli media reported, Israel has struck Iran. Not only did Israel strike Iran, but they simultaneously struck inside Iran, struck inside of Syria, and struck inside of Iraq, attacking Iranian troops in all three locations, according to the reports that we have seen. And what's so interesting is, is that the Lord had, had led us this evening to do a live stream up on the channel about how Israel is planning to strike into Iran, give you all the information on that, and also, as Israel is planning to strike into Iran this week, also water turned blood red in Iran at the same time this week, signifying judgment coming on Iran. And now, right before we were about to come on with our live stream we had planned, then we saw the report, reports coming in from our, our live feed from uh, Israeli media and then we also confirmed it with our live stream from U.S. media as well. That according to them, it was confirmed that Israel has stricken Iran with an attack this evening. Breaking news. We were going to come on and say that Israel is planning to make an unprecedented direct attack into Iran as a counterstrike on Iran for Iran launching those 300 missiles and drones at Israel last weekend. But just as we were about to come on and to tell you all the information on that, bam! What we were led to, to uh, speak on this evening, it happened before we could get on and to tell you about it. So in the first ever such attack by Israel into Iran directly. That has happened this evening according to Israeli media and U.S. media. It was the first ever such attack on Israel by Iran directly from inside of Iran. Directly from inside Iran's Persian territory, they launched their attack on Israel. And now, now this week, Israel has returned an eye for an eye, as Israel this week has committed an unprecedented military strike inside of Iran. And at the same time, there are also Jewish media reports, Jewish religious media reports, of water 
having turned blood red in Iran this week with the significance of that event being that they said it was happening right before the Jewish Passover. And could these signs be indicating, all these signs that are happening, could these signs be indicating that the prophetic conflict between Israel and Persia, Iran, is now entering an unprecedented prophetic phase of intensity that will lead to fulfillment of specific last days Bible prophecies concerning the Jewish state of Israel and Islamic Iran, the Islamic Arabs, and the West. After Iran had launched a large wave of drones and missiles this past weekend in an unprecedented attack on Israel, there were multiple reports that we found coming out this week which were saying that U.S. intelligence was saying that Israel was planning to return an eye for an eye to where just as Iran had made an unprecedented attack on Israel, Israel was planning to make an unprecedented attack by Israel directly into Iran. We saw one report concerning this on Sky News that Israel planned to counterstrike inside of Iran with reports suggesting that U.S. intelligence was causing U.S. officials to believe that Israel was considering making what they call, and I quote from the report, a limited and narrow, unquote, strike inside of Iran. As they said, that U.S. intelligence was reportedly expecting Israel's military response to the Iranian strikes to be a limited strike inside of Iran, where one senior administration official and sources familiar with the U.S. intelligence said that it appeared Israel was considering a, quote, narrow and limited strike, unquote. But they said that the sources also said that the U.S. had not been given official information on what the plans might be, with one administration official reportedly saying that we would hope that Israel would give the U.S. some warning so that the U.S. could be prepared to protect U.S. personnel, not just military, but diplomatic personnel throughout the Middle East region. And the U.S. official added that the additional move now by Israel attacking Iran directly it opens up a series of other potential possibilities that can happen, which they said some of them, which are quite frightening. That's their words. Also, CNN reported this week that after multiple long war cabinet meetings that Israel was firm that it must respond to the unprecedented attack by Iran. And they also said that U.S. intelligence thinks that Israel is considering a limited strike inside of Iran, but that it is Israel, but they said the same thing, that Israel had not given the U.S. any warning of what their plan is and when it would occur. Intelligence analysts, intelligence analysts have also been saying this week that if Israel makes a direct attack on Iran, which now Israeli media and U.S. media have confirmed that they have. They said that Israel making that direct, on attack, that direct attack on Iran, that it would set yet another precedent, where although Israel is believed to have conducted covert operations in Iran for years, often target, targeting individuals or facilities seen as a threat to Israel's security, Still yet, Israel had never launched a direct IDF military assault on the country of Iran. With some of the experts saying that it appears that we, and this is important, this is significant, they said that it appears we are entering a new, very dangerous phase of the Israeli-Iranian conflict where Iran has changed the rules of the game. 
where their direct attack on Israel last weekend from Iranian soil upon Israel to where now we see that Israel has returned the favor upon Persia, Iran's own heads. The military and intelligence experts, they also reported that uh, CNN had also reported that an Israeli official has told CNN that among the military options that Israel was considering would be an attack on an Iranian facility that would send a strong message to Tehran, but avoid causing casualties. But that can be a very difficult needle to thread. The Hindustan Times reported this week that Israel was planning to hit Iran clearly and forcefully, and that Israel is already, they said that Israel was already prepared, they, they were definitely in the know. <laughs> Hindustan Times was definitely in the know. They said that Israel was already preparing its war planes this week to launch the strike into Iran, and now we see that it's happened. With that report also being carried by Israel's Channel 12 News, saying that Israel's Air Force, including U.S.-made F-16, F-15, and F-35 fighter jets, had been gearing up to launch, had been gearing up this week to launch the counterstrike into Iran, saying that Israel's attack into Iran will be meant as a message that Israel will not allow an attack of that magnitude against it to pass without a reaction, a retaliation. Also this week, Israeli media had reported that Israel's military chief, General Herza Halevi, he said this week that Iran's actions will be met with a response but he did not provide any detail or the timing. But then he did say this, and, and this was really, now, it's, now we see that it was really misdirection by Israel. But he also said in those statements this week, he said that the IDF was enabling the home front policy to give citizens, to give Israeli citizens, this Passover week to live almost like normal, he said. With him hinting that Israel's response to Iran's attack was not imminent, but would be after the Jewish Passover, which now we see that those statements by Israel's chief military officer was nothing but misdirection to misdirect the Iranians to think that Israel would not strike this week and to let their guard down. <clears throat> but it was also reported that Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, that this week he told U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, as the U.S. this week has been leaning on Israel to not attack Iran. But Gallant told Austin that Israel had no choice but to respond to the unprecedented attack launched from Iran against Israel, and also saying that Israel could not allow ballistic missiles to be launched at Israel's territory without a response. And he said that Israel was considering next steps and that the launch of so many missiles and drones to Israeli territory would be answered with a retaliation. And now we see what that would be as it has happened. Israel possesses a range of high-tech weaponry, including the F-35 fighter planes, that can launch long-range munitions, which the experts say gives Israel the ability to directly strike inside Iran or of any of its proxies in the region, and that is exactly what Israel has now done, according to the reports. Israel has struck within Iran. We're going to get to those reports in a minute to give you more detail about that. Israel has also struck Iran in Syria. Israel has also struck Iran in Iraq as well, according to the report that I read on Jerusalem Post right before we came on live. 
and AP News reported that senior researchers at Israel's Institute for National Security, they were saying this week that they did not think Israel would do a full-scale attack across many attacks across Iran, but that it would probably be limited against one or two locations inside of Iran. But we'll see exactly as, as we get all the debrief and all the media on these attacks this evening, we'll find out exactly what the facts are on that. But now here's the thing. The New York Post reported across, and it was also across a lot of other media, that Iran is saying that if Israel took even the slightest action, that then Israel would face from Iran a severe, extensive, and painful response from Iran, where they went on to say that we will respond in a massive, broad, and painful manner to the slightest action targeting Iran's interests. And with Iran also saying that they were ready to use weapons that we have not used before. Which sounds ominous. Folks, what you have here, as we, as we look at this, as we assess it and, and, and debrief ourselves on it, what you actually have here happening, Israel has done what they said they would do and that they would respond and attack. They have. It appears, and we'll look at the reports here in just a moment, it appears that they did it in a broader scale than many thought would happen. All the analysts were saying they thought that they would strike inside of Iran, just one side or two sides. But it looks like they hit simultaneously against across Iran, across Syria, across Iraq. So it seems, just on the forefront of it, that there was more of a response than what was expected. Here's the thing. If Iran does what I just quoted them as saying that they will do, what this could mean is, is that now that there will be an even bigger, more extensive counterstrike by Iran, and Iran can fire a lot of missiles. They have a, they have a, a huge portfolio of missiles that can reach Israel from Iran, so they can launch a lot of ballistic missiles at Israel. And if, and if the United States keeps its word, the United States government told Israel that if they counterstruck Iran, that the United States was not going to help them. So that means that if Iran fires hundreds of missiles and drones again, and they've got a lot more than 300 left, if they were to fire hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of missiles and drones now, and if the United States keeps, it wor keeps its word, that means that Israel's own fighter jets and Iron Dome missile defense systems would have to take care of it all on their own. I don't know, unless without the divine help of the Lord God, I don't know that Israel could, could handle that. Also, what can happen here? And that it seems that Israel also struck the proxies. It doesn't say, the report that I saw did not say that they struck Lebanon, but they've already been striking Lebanon anyway. They've already been striking. There's been major attacks between Israel and Hezbollah of Lebanon this week over the northern border of Israel. But now with Israel not only striking Lebanon, as I mentioned, but also striking Syria, also striking Iraq. What you can have here is the potential trigger for the Psalm 83 All-Arab War on Israel. Or at least a major trigger that is going to accelerate now events moving quickly toward that All-Arab Islamic War on Israel. This is, as those analysts were saying that I quoted, we have now entered a new, very dangerous prophetic time in the Islamic-Israeli conflict. I'm going to come back to the water turning to blood report that came out of Jewish-Israeli media this week. I'm going to come back to that 
But if you would allow me and be patient with me as I look at the live stream feed and also the Israeli live feeds that I have up as well. I'm seeing here that the headline says that Israel has, Israel said that it has launched a quote limited unquote strike on Iran as response to Iran's last weekend attack on Israel. Iranian media, Israeli media is reporting that Iran media is saying that nuclear facilities in Isfahan are secure. Now I'm going to go over here to a, another report that we also have up. Where here Israeli media is saying that Israeli strikes are reported in Iran. Syria also reports airstrikes. I'm going down through this. It says that an Israeli missile strike has targeted a site in Iran early Friday morning, according to ABC News. The report came shortly after local sources in Iran reported explosions in Isfahan in central Iran, which is close to some Iranian nuclear facilities. But in addition to striking in central Iran, the report says that they also struck in southern Syria. They struck Iran in southern Syria. And if this is correct, they're also saying that they struck Iran in Iraq in the Baghdad area of Iraq and also the Babel government of Iraq as well. It says that videos from Isfahan appear to show Iranian air defenses have been activated in the skies over that region of Iran. The Iranian FARS news agency reported that there were explosions heard by the local Iranians east of Isfahan and near the Isfahan International Airport. But FARS stressed that they did not have the details on the explosions as of yet. Then they say that FARS and other Iranian news agencies reported that air defenses were activated across that central region in response to missiles and drones. It says that Iranian air defenses were also activated in Tabriz in northwestern Iran as well after, there was a, uh, after they spotted something in the air in that location. And according to Bloomberg News, they say that Israeli officials notified the U.S. that they plan to launch the strike on Iran in the next 24 to 48 hours. So they did give the United States a little bit of a head up, heads up. Now, they also say that there were also airstrikes on targeted sites of, in Syria where there are Syrian and Iran Iranian army troops in Aswada and Daraa governance of southern Syria. And according to local Syrian news, they said that the airstrikes targeted radar systems in Karda and Israel in Daraa in southern Syria. Also, Syrian residents in Iraq reported hearing the sounds of fighter jets, the Israeli fighter jets, on early Friday morning as well. And they said that flight trackers showed several flights headed for Iran that had turned around. Okay, they're doing, they, they just took took my feet away because they're, re, they're refurbishing it, they're replenishing it. They said that the flight trackers showed that uh, several flights headed for Iran had turned around and diverted from their routes. That's an interesting point, which makes it seem to sound, that sound like there was even more Israeli jets that for some reason had to turn back. It says that the Iranian Mir news agency reported that flights to Tehran, Esfahan, and Shiraz have been suspended. So basically, Iran has shut down the Iranian airspace and shut down Iranian airports. 
shortly after the Israeli missile strikes were reported here in the U.S., U.S. Senator Marco Rubio published a post on uh, Twitter, now known as X, reading, saying that Israel has the ability to conduct strikes against targets inside Iran without entering Iranian airspace from aircraft over Syrian and Iraqi airspace. So it seems that uh, that U.S. senator is saying that it could be that Israel fired these missiles from Syrian airspace and Iraqi airspace. And they do have that capability with those F-35s to exactly do that. And then they say that Israeli media reported that several senior Israeli officials were present in their military headquarters in Tel Aviv monitoring this attack. So now it, it remains to be seen what will happen with Iran. What will Iran do? There's also this news flash coming across our live feed from uh, the Middle East that the USMB in Jerusalem issues a security alert for the U.S. Embassy in Israel after the reported Israeli strikes in Iran. Again, it says there's also a news flash that Iran media is saying that all Iranian nuclear facilities in the region of Isfahan are completely secure. And Iran, Iran uh, military is also saying that that there were several Israeli drones that were successfully shot down. Now, I, I had just mentioned to you earlier in the live stream what Iran has said that they will do. Iran has said that if Israel makes the slightest move of a counterstrike on Iran, after Iran's attack on Israel this past weekend of 300 drones and missiles, Iran has said that they will up the ante and do a massive response and attack on Israel. Also this week, Iran warned that it can revise its nuclear doctrine. They've always said that their nuclear uh, program is for peaceful purposes only. But now they're, they're saying that they are warning that they may revise their nuclear doctrine to where they say that they will purposely have the intent to go nuclear. Again, uh, we will see to uh, what degree any of this happens. So this evening, breaking news that Israel has now struck inside of Iran with Israeli military jets striking in Iran in the region of Isfahan, also striking in southern Syria, and also striking in Iraq in the area of Baghdad, striking Iran in all three of those locations. And also this week, Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon have been having major confrontation over the northern border of Israel. And I tell you, what we could very well see here as far as Iran's response, they could, they could launch... There's not a whole lot that, that Iran can do directly from their own soil other than, and they really don't have an air force. They don't really have an air force. They can't even, they don't have an air force that can even stand in the shadow of Israel's air force. But they do have a significant stockpile of potent missiles and drones. So what Iran can do from their own soil, uh, their own soil is unleash another large-scale wave of drones and missiles. And simultaneously, at the same time, they could have their militias in Iraq, in Syria, and Hezbollah in Lebanon, simultaneously all at the same time to attack Israel together with that wave of attack from Iran. That could very well be what they could do, which that could very well be a trigger to accelerate the Middle East region toward the Psalm 83 
war where all Arabs will attack Israel. And I tell you, that, uh, that military, and we, you know, the fact is, is that the Hezbollah army, the Hezbollah terror army in Lebanon, they are basically Iran. They're the proxy of Iran, but Iranian Islamic Republic generals and the leaders of Hezbollah, they are joined at the hip. So you might as well say that the Hezbollah army in Lebanon is Iran's army. And that Hezbollah army in uh, Lebanon is a, is a bulldog. That is a huge army with a massive arsenal of missiles and rockets that over the past years have been upgraded to be much more potent, much more powerful, and much more accurate. And if Iran was to unleash that bulldog of Hezbollah in Lebanon on Israel, that, that could be one of the most potentially destructive things that Iran could do to Israel. Something will happen. As, as I told you this past weekend on the live stream, whenever this was happening with Iran unleashing that wave of attacks onto Israel, an unprecedented attack, I told you during that live stream that there would be escalations that would happen and that it's going to lead to the fulfillment of the prophecies. How quickly and what the twists and turns will be, we shall see. But now here it's happened. Another escalation. And Iran must escalate and respond to this or their statements will absolutely mean nothing to the rest of their Arabs, the rest of their Arab proxies in the Middle East region. So now we have to ask the question, what will be the next attack? When will it happen? But here this week, as there were reports, as I was describing to you, that were coming out this week, that U.S. intelligence was saying that Israel was going to strike inside of Iran. This week, as those reports were coming out, and now today, this week, as we see that Israel has struck Iran inside of the country of Iran militarily, at the same time this week, there were also reports in Israeli religious Jewish media that as Israel was preparing to make this unprecedented direct attack into Iran, that at the same time this week, there was a biblical sign that they reported that appeared in Iran, where the Jewish religious media reported that Iran's meteorological organization had issued a red warning, red warning for flooding in Iran's western provinces toward Israel as a wave of heavy rain approached. And then they said that the rain fell in amazing large amounts. And the social media videos that you're seeing now show that the torrents of water were flowing blood red on the Iranian island of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf. Let's look at that again. The social media videos from Iran that you're seeing right now show that the torrents of water were flowing blood red on the Iranian island of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf, where they said that the phenomenon of the water turning blood red there was significant because it was happening. It was significant, they said, because it was happening just before the Jewish Passover, which is also when in the biblical plagues, in the biblical plagues, the Holy Scriptures tell us that the plague of the water turning blood red in Egypt before the Passover of the Jews, it was a sign that judgment was coming upon the enemy of Israel 
but deliverance of redemption for the Israelites. And the Jewish religious media also said, they were saying that there are Jewish rabbis who are saying in Israel that Israel's successful defense this past weekend against the wave of hundreds of missiles from Iran to where not one got through that hit and hurt Israel. They said that it was not a technological marvel, but a miracle that they say was the divine intervention of the Lord God protecting Israel. And then they said that with Iran having been suffering severe drought, but then there being floods of waters in a red warning by Iran this week, to where the rivers of water turned blood red on Iran's Persian island, just in time before the Jewish Passover, they said that this means that just as God struck the Egyptians with the plagues, they said it was a sign that also he will strike the enemies of the Jewish people near the time of their redemption. And here it is this week. A major flood in Iran. A red warning flood. It happened this week, right before the Israeli jets came. And then the water flowing, blood red, on the island of Hormuz, right before. And what's significant about that is not that the water was blood red flowing on the island of Hormuz, the Iranian territory of Hormuz, but they said that what was significant is the timing, that it happened right before, right before the Jewish Passover and right before the Israeli jets attacked Iran. Ooh, and I, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. And as I mentioned earlier, the experts are now saying and we've been warning that the Israeli-Islamic conflict is entering a new, very dangerous phase where the rules of the game now have been changed by Israel and by Iran to where they are making direct attacks on each other. And could these signs be signaling that the prophetic, the biblical prophetic conflict between Israel and Islamist Arabs and Islamist Persians, the conflict between them and Israel is now entering an unprecedented prophetic phase of intensity that will lead to the fulfillment of the last day's Bible prophecies between Israel and the Islamist Arabs and Persians that will affect the entire Middle East and the world as described in the prophecies of Psalm 83, Isaiah 17, Ezekiel 38 and 39, and Joel 3. And brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, this weekend in our Sunday evening Watch and Pray live stream, we plan the Lord willing, no telling what is going to happen between now and then. We are in a new place. We have entered new territory in the conflict between Israel and Iran and the Arabs. So we'll see what happens the rest of this week. But we plan, Lord willing, to describe to you from the Bible prophecies how that the Israeli Iranian-Persian conflict actually precedes and prepares the way for the rise of Antichrist in the end time that will lead to the greatest time of tribulation that the world will ever know as described in the apocalypse of the Revelation. So we'll be diving deep into some Bible prophecies and sharing some amazing things with you this coming Sunday evening, watch and pray live stream. It's amazing. These events and conditions that are happening right now, this evening in the world, they are connecting directly 
to the end time as warning signs pointing to the nearing fulfillment of the last day's prophecies at the end of, the, at the end of this age. And it's revealing that it's time to prepare now for the nearing appearance of Lord Jesus Christ for his church, so to be saved from the wrath of vengeance that is to come. The only way that one can escape that is by obeying the commandment of the Lord Jesus in John chapter 3 and verse 3. And John chapter 3 and verse 5, where Lord Jesus said, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And Lord Jesus Christ said that you must, those are Jesus' words, must be born again of water and spirit, or one cannot enter the kingdom of God, according to Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ sanctioned only his chosen apostle in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 through 19, to tell us how to be born again where he gave only his chosen and sanctioned apostle the keys to the kingdom of heaven to open the door and tell people how to be born again of water and spirit into the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ. With Lord Jesus also saying that what his chosen and sanctioned apostle preached was bound, recorded in heaven, and that's eternal, for his church. And in the Acts of the Apostles' preaching, in Acts chapter 2 in Jerusalem, in Acts chapter 10 to the Gentiles, and in Acts chapter 19, as the Lord Jesus spread his church to the Gentile nations, the chosen apostles of Jesus preached how to be born again of water and spirit through baptism in Jesus Christ and being filled with the Holy Ghost of the Lord Jesus. These prophetic signs of the last day's prophecies that we're seeing happening now show us it's imperative to prepare now for the appearance of the Lord Jesus according to what Lord Jesus and his apostles actually preached in the acts of their preaching in their Holy Bible Scriptures. And if you need help finding someone to biblically baptize you and pray with you biblically where you're located according to the preaching of Jesus and his apostles actually in the Bible, you can contact us here at Signs of the, La Signs of the Last Days Ministry to help you find someone. Our contact information is on our website, signsofthelastdays.org. Go to that website, go down to the very bottom of the page, down to the footer in smaller print, you'll find our email address there. Then email us, tell us you'd like to know a location near you for biblical prayer and baptism. Give us the name of your town, name of your state, and your zip code. And then we'll do our best to help you, just like we've helped. We're, we're having people contact us every week. We've had a revival for the past year of people contacting us all the time, saying, where can I go to be biblically baptized and filled with the Spirit as Lord Jesus and his apostles actually preached in the Acts of the Apostles' preaching? So contact us, and we'll be glad to help you as well. Don't forget, be looking for our next scheduled Watch and Pray live stream, our Watch and Pray live stream on this Sunday evening, where we plan then to share more signs of the last day's prophecies that show how the Israeli, Iranian, Persian Iranian conflict proceeds and prepares the way for Antichrist. And also, will pray live over you and your prayer requests. We are truly a last day's church. That is, preaching, praying, worshiping, and getting ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that the signs show us is rapidly approaching. And don't forget, also, we've been praying our holy hour of prayer this week on our fast day this week. Fasting one day this week, praying a holy hour of prayer on that fast day as we are preparing for the Passover communion. This coming Sunday, watch and pray live stream. We're going to have the Passover communion with our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So make sure you're getting ready for that. Have your fruit of the vine and your unleavened bread ready for the Passover communion. This coming Sunday, watch and pray live stream.
Please make sure you're subscribed to and following this channel. Please click the bell. Get all notifications for our live streams and videos. The last day's prophecy signs are happening right now in world events. They're telling us, as the Lord Jesus said, keep looking up as the signs show that our redemption is drawing near. Signs of the times are everywhere. There's a brand new feeling in the air. Keep your eyes upon the eastern stars.